welcome back folks in this video we are going to do a couple more command and get you more confidence on the Linux terminal at this point I'm just going to put this dash there just to show that we're separating that and I want to introduce you to a complex uh, a concept called uh, flags so basically when we run commands we also use some things called flags now let's clear the screen remember when I said uh, when we looked at the man the manual for LS let's have a look at that and if you scroll down just hit enter to scroll down you would see that we have minus a minus capital a dash dash auto now all these things are what we call flags right so it's just a way to extend the functionality of the command that you're running to tell it how you want it to work or to give it an idea of the sort of return data that you're expecting now that may not make a lot of sense to you but let's have a look with a, a practical exercise if i want to do ls we know what ls does by now which is just to list list the folders and files in uh, the current working directory and if I want to see a more a lot more information about the folders and the files that that gets returned I can add a flag uh, called minus L okay so if you do LS minus L you can see that the output is different from what we had previously and this is just a way to tell the the program to say I do want you to list me folders and files however I want it with more information so the minus L is giving us more information so let's see what the manual has to say uh, oops. let's see what the manual has to say about minus L and let's scroll and look for minus L oh there we go it says use a long listing format see so if you did another type of flag there's another one with minus a it says do not ignore entries entries started with dot let's try let's try that as you can see here we don't have any entry starting with dot and if we did ls minus a you can see that the the way it returns the data is quite different now we have some other files that were not included previously dot bash history dot bash log out now these dots these files with dot or folders with dot in linux are usually called the dot files or the dot folders or hidden files or hidden folders now they're there for a reason usually you don't want to touch them you don't want to edit them except you really know what you're doing or you're a system systems administrator or a devops engineer that really understands what he's doing that's the only time you're meant to touch this file otherwise you can mess up the system and that's also one of the reasons why the default ls command doesn't even return it in the first place because it just gives you the folders and files that you can mess about with with these ones you don't um, let's now try to use the ls command and combine it with the minus l and a together and you will see the difference now we have more information let's expand this okay now you see we have more uh, information about the folders and the files including the dot files and also we have more information about each of the files so not only do we have the dot files and folders returned we also have more information about them so these more information include the date the timestamp the owner of the file who created it uh, the permissions and we're going to go into details of all this uh, shortly okay so let's clear the screen and let's uh, update our file so we have the ls we've done ls minus a ls minus l a okay the next thing i'd like to show you is 
how to remove a directory you know at this point we did how to create a directory how about if we wanted to delete a, a directory or a folder well the the command is called rmdir so just like mk is for make directory rmdir is remove directory okay so let's list the directories that we have we have the devops directory and tap tap we have devops file remember devops file devops underscore folder folder remember that so underscore tab again and we have insider so let's navigate inside all of those tab and second tab again okay so there's nothing inside the second inside folder now what we're going to do is to remove this second inside folder so this is second inside folder it's going to inside folder this is second inside folder and we're going to remove that remember the up arrow command to bring back the last command and I'm going to I'm going to go all the way to the uh, beginning and type rmdir see it has removed the second inside folder and we still have the inside folder and the reason we remove the second inside folder is because it's the last folder that we we selected if we had done something like this it would have removed this okay let's try something what if we want to remove the inside folder this inside folder let's what if we want to remove it but we don't specify it from here let's say what we did instead rmdir so we specify rmdir on devops folder what do you think would happen let's try that okay so it's telling us we can't remove rmdir uh, devops folder because it's not empty if we list devops folder we have something inside so that's why we can't remove it that way so if we were to remove inside folder what we would need to do is to type in inside folder and did rmdir and now inside folder is gone and what we'll have left is devops folder let's clear the screen what if we wanted to remove folders recursively what i mean by recursive let's do a list again list devops folder and inside that we don't have anything all right so let's now create something inside uh let's say create creating a uh, A new folder let's just name it that so I'm creating a new folder inside the inside folder okay now recursive is if I wanted to create everything if I wanted to remove everything inside the DevOps folder meaning I'm gonna remove this and that that's basically recursively removing something because this term is going to come out a lot in the course of your career so recursive is when you remove something within another thing recursive okay right so how do we do that does rmdir help us to do that let's try that So my expectation would be for it to remove everything. But no, it doesn't like it. RMDRL failed to remove Y because directory not empty. So that's the one of the disadvantages of using RMDR because it doesn't have that 
uh, ability to just do it. You know, there's no flag you can provide to it to do it. So there is another command called rm, which you can use to remove files. So if I wanted to delete the DevOps file, uh, I actually don't want to do that because we are keeping something. Let's create another file. Touch test file. Okay, we now have a test file. So if I did rm test file, you can see it removed it. So this rm command is actually able to help us remove directories recursively. And the way it does that is if I did rm minus, remember the flag, minus r, which means recursive. And I did DevOps folder. You can see it has literally removed everything. And if I did ls DevOps, see, we don't even have DevOps folder anymore because it has removed everything ls we don't have devops underscore folder so in what have we just learned so we've learned rm we have also learned rm we learned rm dir and rm and let's just add to this flags i have rm minus r so I'd like you to keep a documentation like this of all the different commands that you're learning so that from time to time you can also make reference to them. You don't have to uh, try to memorize these commands. They just come naturally. They come naturally. So the more practice you're able to get your hands on, the more projects you're able to do, the better for you because then you don't have to cram or memorize any command. It just sticks with you. In the next video, we're gonna see how to move files. So renaming files, removing files, there are other commands we use for that. And I'm gonna show you in the next video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, click and subscribe. See you in the next video.